Welcome, welcome everybody. Today, 385 Mega Song Bringer. Today, I'm working on just my Trello list. Going through, getting things checked off, bugs fixed, little things done. I got about 50 cards left on my now list, and I'd like to get mm, maybe 40 of them done by the time I do a update this week. Probably I'll do an update this to either Tuesday night or Wednesday night. Today's Monday. Anyways, I'm just ripping through trying to do these bugs as fast as I can. Um, but also do them right, you know what I mean? It's it's you can't really fix something in a weak way, you know. If you don't fix it the right way, it'll come back to haunt you every time. So, anyways, um, this one bug I'm working on right now is where um, it does this boss segue here. It segues with the boss room, come back to this room, and the switch sound is no longer playing. Is that the new boss name? <laughs> What's up, Pedro? How's it going, Pedro? How did the boss? How did the interview go? Do you do you have a boss? Do you have a boss yet? So it plays this this sound looping. It's this active looping sound, but something happens with the boss segue part. Where is it? Phase boss. Doors, yeah. Wait, but boss doors, it might be composed of a bunch of different phases. That's right, yeah. It has fade out, fade in, boss doors, fade out, fade in. Any one of those could be the thing that pauses. <laughs> What's up, Sound Dongs? Yes, kill the ravenous Trello. Pedro, I'm not sure if I, you heard me, but I was saying how how to go with your bot, your interview, man. Here, I'll chat it. I shall chat it. I shall chat. Chat typing. So first I'll take a look at phase fade out. See if them um, oh yeah. Profile profile. Stop loops. Two job interviews. First went well, second not so much. Nice. Alright, you got another one though too. Cool man. Well, I wish you good luck. I wish you good luck. Oh oh. Okay. All right, uh, profile, profile. Yeah, we're just calling stop loops here, which is just, there's no way to. Yeah, so really this should be pause loops. That's that might fix this actually already. But it might break other stuff. So that's the that's the thing that makes this one little the what's what seems like a five minute bug fix is now going to become a fifteen minute bug fix because gotta check a few things. Okay. And didn't remove, didn't resume. So fade in. How about in fade in? Flux boss doors. E dot profile. What have been up to? What have you been up to, Saladongs? I just been I just been coding, man. You know, making this game. Profile, profile, resume loops. Yeah. So uh, last week, I guess I did the fire dungeon. That was 
that was big. Fire dungeons all done. It's this dungeon where you take constant damage unless you have this um, like fire armor. It's pretty neat. A new boss too. Oh, still nothing. Dang. Okay, I'm gonna go set a breakpoint wherever it pauses loops or resumes loops. Hey, wow. I just noticed. Oh, it's once, one thing I fixed this weekend actually was pretty neat was um, the shadows. So the shadows now look better and they don't glitch anymore. What is it pausing loops here? What is this? What is this? On faux death pause loops? For anything? On faux death? Okay, that makes sense. Pause loops is fine there. It's gonna get called a lot. Okay. Whoa. That was pretty neat sounding. Well, this guy's gonna do it again. All right, we're gonna unpause this. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Someday I'll have no more glitches. It'll stop being fun. Don't make that prophecy. That's not cool. In between semesters, I've been trying to devote summer to game dev. Right on. Yeah, right on. Input. Cool. Damn, I missed it. All right, so it's calling resume loops, but it might have already stopped loops by now because I, I missed it. Oi, got to do this one over. Okay, so pause loops is off. I guess if I got to resume loops and stop loops there, should catch it. Stop loops immediately. Common. All right, all right. Ah, here we go. Oh, it's creating this other area. Stopping loops there. But that's the common one. Okay, that makes sense. That's fine. Okay, but we're getting it. What's this one? No. Let it go. Right? Yeah, pre-made engines. Mr. F, you're, you're using Linux, huh? Yeah, I don't think you can use Visual Studio on Linux, but they have, they have Visual Code. Have you tried Visual Code? I think Visual Code is a cross-platform. Ah. Oh, right, oh, right, like wine. Yeah, you can do wine or VM. Good suggestion, salad dongs. Okay, it doesn't appear that it stopped. It stopped that loop at all. Unless it was calling it, hmm. Okay, if I turn off stop loops completely, maybe that will work. Yeah, I heard it's more of just a text editor. Yeah. Team services? I don't know. Oh. I 
I think it didn't even call. I don't even think it started playing the loops. Wait a minute. How do I even hear that sound come on? Oh yeah, it does play it. Hmm. Oh, it's silent even if I come back in the room. Oh man, I'm in the... Okay, I think this is going to be fixed a different way around. People always say Linux is good for developers. I'm not really sure why. <laughs> oh, man. Well, I, I know how you feel about that, but I can tell you some of the benefits you're going to get from Linux are that you get to really understand the, the, the compilation pipeline. You know what I mean? You understand GCC. You understand you know the terminal a lot better. You know, once you start getting used to it, once you can understand the Unix terminal, you really have a very powerful tool set for your development. And you don't necessarily need an IDE anymore. You once you can understand CMake or you know any kind of like build system like CMake um, and your comp your compilers and all that from the command line, you really don't need a you really do not need an IDE anymore. You can use just Vim and or or Emacs or something. Yeah, the, the debuggers do kind of suck, but then, but not if you not if you learn to use GDB. You know what I mean? Just use use GDB, and it's a, it's a command line interface to debugging, but it is a powerful tool. It, GDB is actually pretty damn awesome, um, but it's just really command liney. You know, it's not there's no real UI to it. So yeah, GD, GDB, LLDB, there's other DBs out there that are great, but they're just not any UI for them. So if you really want to use a visual UI, like a visual, you know, an IDE, like a, a real IDE, then yeah, Linux isn't. But there, it's, Linux has C Lion. C Lion's cross-platform. Ah oh, man, yeah, yeah. JetBrains has a bunch of different great IDEs, and one of theirs is C Lion, which is a cross-platform compiler for um, and IDE for C and C++. So you, it works on everything. This thing works on Windows, Mac, Linux. So you might want to check this out because if you're going to be, because I've heard this is a really good IDE. I haven't, I haven't used it myself, but um, once you get to, once you get used to this, then you don't really need to switch back to Visual Studio necessarily. And it works on every platform, so you're good to go. Once if you if you start using something like this, you really don't need to switch back. Oh, you're using C sharp. Oh, well that changes everything. I don't know what to say. I don't know. I don't know much about C sharp myself. Okay. Uh, Right, I don't think it's actually like if I come into this. Wait, undo what I just did. Modified flux, change that to pause loops. Got to resume loops here. Wait. Source flux. I'm just copying this to my desktop because I don't. Just in case I want to use it again. Git checkout source flux. Okay, I think I'm gonna attack this problem from a different angle. Um, I think it's just not resuming it. So if I've already defeated these guys. In this room, turn on the switch here. Oh, 
I don't know. I don't know. Well, the problem with C sharp is that it's it's you know it was a it was a Windows based language, so I'm not sure if it wor even works on Linux. Mono, yeah, there's mono, right? Mono game. I don't know if sure. Does that mono game even work on? I don't even know how you would do C sharp on Linux. But I'm sure there is a way. Okay, so yeah, this is illustrating the problem right here. When, when you, it doesn't play the sound right here. So when you have this switch overlay sound, I guess that's in a NIMS. Switch overlay, yeah, here it is. Creates the sprite here. Basically, we need to play this active sound if we already have activated this switch. Hmm. Oh, oh, that's what mono is. Right, right. Yeah, I forgot what mono was. I forgot what .NET was myself. I've never used .NET. Ah. Oh. oh, oh, right, right. That's right, they did, huh? Microsoft's been doing some good moves like that. I'm glad they're finally embracing open source. This is great. So it's creating, it's calling the switch from all oh, right. Okay, so it does the switch overlay right here. It's calling with complete, true, animated, false. I got this. Wait, I guess I should have ran through that. Lips. <laughs> right. Yeah, Mr. Hef, it's Linux is not something you can really kind of get totally used to in just a week. There's a, there's so much which distro are you on by the way? There's so much little stuff you that it takes getting used to with Linux. You know, it's like you get you get a Linux setup started and then you're like, "Oh, damn, but now I need um I really want my scroll bars to be wider because the scroll bars are so tiny with this Linux uh you know, windowing, what's their windowing called? Windowing apps, it's X or something. But you know what I mean? You're on Ubuntu? Yeah, Ubuntu is a great thing to start with, I would think. I've, uh, I'm using an Ubuntu derivative myself called um, Elementary OS. Elementary OS is really great. Yeah, um, I got a triple boot set up for for the game development because I got I have to publish on all three platforms, so I have to have kind of all platforms on this computer. So I got Elementary OS on on, on eight gigabytes partition, and then um, Windows it takes up forty gigs, and then OS X is the rest. But it's really really nice having all three platforms available. Because it just makes, you know, I can go recompile um, Songbringer for all platforms relatively quickly. And and it's also nice because I can test everything, too, in all those different environments. So it's really nice to be like, okay, did I just wrote some new code with the, with the shadows, for example. And I had to go check it on Windows because Windows is always the thing that breaks um, for little things, you know, like... <laughs> The other day, like I, I had to fix a bug that it was only a Windows only bug, and it was just because the shaders didn't have a new line. I'm like, oh my god, really? Windows breaks because the shader didn't have a new line, and no, every other platform doesn't break. But anyways, it's really nice to be able to test things on multiple different platforms and also multiple different compilers. So you can try, you know, I can compile with Visual Studio or compile with on Linux. I compile with just the command line CMake, um, and I debug with GDB, and then on here on on I, uh, OS X, I just 
you know, use Xcode. So highly recommend getting a whole triple boot setup. We're got the end. What's up? Uh, no, Mr. Hef, no, this is not, I'm not on, I'm not on elementary right now. No, this is, yeah, elementary looks a lot like Mac OS X. That's why I like it so much, but also because it's so freaking easy to use this. The minute you set up elementary OS, it like works out of the box and Ubuntu kind of requires a little more tinkering, you know, Linux in general is the tinkerer's. OS. If you love tinkering and you love changing everything about your OS and recompiling your o your OS and everything, that you're going to be right at home with Linux. I know, right? The new lines. Uh huh. So let's step through this. This is where it creates the overlay sprite. Here's where it sets the current frame. Here's where it activates the sprite. It's flickering the electricity and stuff. Oh, okay, so it's gonna get down to this other bit here. It's gonna be like, if animated, no, but otherwise, play the freaking sound. Oh yeah, you only have 150. Uh, dang. Yeah, it's hard, because you really only need about 50 gigabytes to spare if you're gonna get triple platform. Because as long as you can get by with Windows only being, or, or one of your platforms only being like 40 gigs or whatever. But yeah, I know what I mean. I'm, I have a 250 here, so it's kind of easier for me to be like, okay, I can take 50 of it and put it for those two OSs, and then the other 200 I can leave for my normal development. Yeah, and yeah, that's true. I do, I do just triple boot for mostly for testing the game. I prefer to develop in just one one platform. There. Nice. There we go. Okay, so it's playing that sound now. If I go out of this room, come back. Yeah. Okay, good. Now I'm gonna turn off the switch so I can do this room again, do this boss segue thing. And it should segue to the boss room, come back to this room and play the sound. Plays the sound once there. It pauses it. No, it stops it. Nice, come back here, we got the sound again. All right, bug fix, though. Check it out the list. Nice, I love having things checked out my list. And that's a pretty simple fix, look at that. It's only three lines. All right. It's, uh, this is not very noteworthy, but I'm just gonna note it in the change log anyways. It's a little bug fix. Hmm. Yeah, that's a good question. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure, yeah, Windows is only on internal partitions. Yeah, I think Ragathian was talking about the other OS's, like Linux and Mac. Yeah, Debian server, cool. Oh, Ragathian, whoa, you could pre-mount as a drive on your internal, really? 
You got you got to you got a good thought there. I like that. That would if you, as long as you could trick Windows into thinking it's an internal partition, I think you could do it. There are ways of doing that with definitely with your with your refund like um you know your uh, whatever partition you're using for your EFI your boot up process and all that you can definitely trick an OS into thinking it's you know. I'm not a big wizard on all that kind of stuff, but I know that you from doing my own doing refined basically. Have you seen refined? This might be something you want to check out, especially when you're in this whole Linux world right now and you're thinking about getting Windows back and all that. Refine is basically a boot manager utility. Macs come with one already, but like Refine's better because Refine you can boot any kind of OS and. It's uh, and it's pretty cool too because you can customize it so you can make it look like really neat if you want. It doesn't have to look like this kind of ugly screenshot right here, which is the default. There's some really nice refined um, UIs or whatever. I even have a text one. Look at that. But but I'm thinking something like this. Like you might be able to actually use this to trick Windows. Whoa, nice Regathian. What's the difference between that and Grub? It's just that Grub is a little it, Grub is only um is only a command line, right? Grub does not have a UI. So Refine has a UI and Refine's I think Refine's a little newer. If I I could be wrong about that this all, but like Refined I think I don't know. You have to kind of maybe do your own research on this, but I, it's it's similar. It's basically the same thing as Grub. But it's just like, I think it does it a, like perhaps a little better. I don't know. All right, one bug down. Which one was that? Switch sound didn't resume. All right, cool. Next one, I'm gonna do a burnt effect. So when you burn things, or when you get burnt, especially, the burn effect wears off after a bit. All right, Mr. Hef, cheers, man. Yes, all right, I'm below 50 bugs on my Trello now list. This is great. Okay, burnt effect. Easiest way to do that is to start fighting the fire boss. Because you get will get burned really fast. Change I'm changing this so it plays the save game I have with the fire boss. Step on one of these fires. Player fades to black. It never changes until actually never ever changes. So I just want that. It's cool to be burnt like this for a minute, but I just I want that to that effect to fade to fade off. So where does it actually change the sprite and make it all black like that? Might be an apply elements. Or burns you. Ah, here we go. Yeah, so we'll comment this out and make sure that's the code that's making him turn black. Burnt. Okay, 
So I'm just going to turn this into a sequence. Actually, no. I'm not going to do it right here. I'm going to do it in a nims. A nims. Burnt. Just calling it burnt. What do, what do I need to pass in here? Burnt. Take an entity. Maybe just needed. Okay, burnt. So I'm creating a burnt and nim special and nim just for this. So it only does this if the entity is white, meaning it just allows all color through. So that's good because if we're doing a, this fade to tint action over time, it's going to be slightly off white and then becoming gray and all that. So it won't re it won't re redo this animation twice. So I'm going to get the entity render component. And if it's not white, we return. Otherwise, we do this action. And this action is a sequence. First thing that happens is a tint to. So this, the sprite gets tinted towards a darker color. And the duration. What's the duration supposed to be? Duration 2.0. Okay, so over two seconds it becomes dark. Then in a delay time, maybe five seconds. Maybe five seconds and then tint back to white. What's up, Redman? Red Sands? How's it going today? How's it going? What you what you up to? I'm just working on my Trello list here. I got Let's see. I started today with 59 cards. Now I'm down to 49 cards. Bam. Hopefully I can get down to maybe, I can get maybe like 40 more of these cards fixed before tomorrow night. We'll see. In my dreams, I'm, I'm like done. In my dream, my wildest dreams, I'm always done with everything on my now list. But it never happens. I never, ever, ever finish this list. Nice. You're watching Netflix? Right on. Right on. What you watching? I was watching Agents of Shields, A Agents of Shield recently. Mr. Robot, you see Mr. Robot? Okay, Bert. Should wear off soon. There we go. Cool. All right. Wears off. And if I get hurt again, like I hit one of these little fire spiders. Yeah. Get burnt. I think you should get burnt faster. Okay, burn, apply, let's do one second. Captain America, nice, beautiful flick. Right on, man. 
Yeah, oh yeah, this this fire boss is done. Yeah, he's great. He's pretty damn fun. In fact, he's too powerful at this point. He'll kill you fast. So I'm trying to, I'm, one of the things on my list is to weaken him a little bit so he's a little bit easier because he was like freaking crazy mega hard when I fought him uh, last week or whatever. Yeah, there we go. Actually, a little faster. That was, he, he became dark a little too slowly. So yeah, I think that's one of the next things on my list is just to make sure this guy is totally beatable with the current items I have. Now I want to make sure that burning things also looks good. It's like if I burn some trees or something. How does that look? Yeah, I fixed the shadows too, you noticed. Yeah. I spent actually most of this whole weekend I worked on the shadows. And yeah, and they use and I found one way to oops, sorry. Um, I found one way to make them almost always do the fa the shadow glitch, and that's if you if you do the blink. Whoa! Blink's all dark. Oh yeah, it's always been that way. But yeah, this used to totally cause the, the shadows to glitch all the time, and the shadows are a lot a lot more efficient now. Oh, I thought I had the fire top back. Make that the fire top hat. There we go. It, it gets dark. Fire goes away. Okay, so it fades back in. I don't know if I want it to fade back in. Yeah, I want I want the bushes and stuff. Everything that's like a. How do I determine that? I guess it would be based on the collision component. Any get. Collision component for id dot category. Use the has bits. So if this thing's category has k filter friend. So we'll say now friend or foe. Damn. I guess if it now has an AI component or a move component. Maybe a move component. What's up, PMC? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Bafu, no, Bafu's def he's not dead anymore. He last week he was dead for a minute because um Boogie's hard drive died. And but uh yeah, Boogie got him working again, so um I think Bafu's just on vacation today. He's kicking it. He's kicking it for sure. He's watching Netflix. <laughs> Bafu's just Bafu's also watching some amazing flick right now. Yeah, anything that has a move component. Yeah, we'll do it that way. Okay. Entity get move component empty. So if it doesn't have a move component, She was do not there. Okay. Oh, this is even simpler. So yeah, this is just like how we used to be. Yeah. 
What am I up to today? I'm working on <laughs> bacon. <laughs> I wish I was cooking bacon. No, I'm working on my Trello list today. I got, I'm got. i working through some bugs. Um, I'll be working on the fire boss, one little bug with him in the fire dungeon a lot today. So I'm kind of working on that, like the atmosphere in the in the fire dungeons needs to transition a little bit better. You know, it, like right now it's really nice and orange and stuff like that when you're in the fire dungeon, but it transitions not kind of uh, abruptly. So I need to work on that. So yeah, just working through the Trello list, fixing bugs, fixing bugs, seeing how many I can get fixed before I release an update probably tomorrow night. If not tomorrow night, the next night. And this will be mostly a bug fix update. There's not really that much new. But I might introduce the new feature of being able to warp to any position. That would be, that's high up on my list right now. So I'll, sh I'll soon be getting to that, maybe before tomorrow night. Okay, so those things should stay black. Yep, cool. What about if I get burnt? I didn't get burnt. Oh, because the fire came from me. Okay. So good. These things don't have a move component, so they just stay black. But anything else that moves, like an enemy or the player or whatever, that should fade back. to the regular color. So now if I go back here to the fire boss, fight him for a second, and just get burnt. And it wears off. Very cool. Right on. That's good. All right, this one's ready to check in. The name is Burnt. 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 Cool. Smarter Burnt. I mean, this is actually kind of noteworthy. Burnt visual effect wears off after a few seconds. Let's commit that. Cross it off the Trello list. Boom! Okay, next thing I want to do is the smoother heat room atmosphere. So I'm going to start at the beginning of this dungeon. Find a room, probably the very first room is a good one um, because what I want to see is it, I want to see it go from the this right here where it's like, um, you know, regular. And then if we go into a hot room like this, it doesn't look very good. It might look good on the way in, but if I go out, see how it just, boom, it just instantly turns off. So I want it to transition nicely from one room to another. And I think the best way to do that is to create a, a fade. Create like a fade effect that works for layer gradients because that's what these things are. The atmosphere is a bunch of layer gradients and the layer gradients work a little differently than other, um, other entities in the Cocos 2DX world because they have, a, they have an opacity for they have like basically two inner opacities for their gradient and they also have the overall opacity for the whole layer gradient thing so those kind of have to be transitioned smoothly between each other so i'm gonna start creating an effect for that
I think. Wait a minute. Maybe not. Maybe not. Let me take another look at this problem. Atmosphere. Whew, it is hot as hell. I'm going to get a cup of ice water real quick. Hold on a sec. Whoa. Brain freeze. Oh, no, I haven't got any games during the Steam Summer Sale. I guess none of my games went on sale. I didn't get any emails. Is it already over? Uh, yeah, my instinct says I need to do a, a proper fade from one type of gradient to another. Is that right? I guess it's here in this function. We got this cons uh, opacity before a get opacity. So Hmm. Huh, I'm actually kind of confused. I'm not sure. I guess it would not be doing this one. It would be doing this. It's really just changing. Pa gradient, gradient, opacity, opacity. Oh, that's right. It's it's blending the whole scale of everything or the the position and Oh, okay. Two pause set position. Okay, this bit right here needs to get better. It needs to blend its position over time. Also, it's scale. 
It might change its scale, so that needs to blend over time. Okay, I'm not even using this bit here that much. Atmosphere. Do, 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 do. Yep, this is the only place I'm using this. Okay. Let's confirm. So this bit here is really unnecessary. I'm not going to try and code around this. I'm going to do this better. So this is applying opacity. This is applying rotation. Let's apply scale and position. Scale to scale at x, scale at y. Move to. Let's take a vec2, forget, create vec2, oh yeah, it's a vec2, okay. So move to, needs to be a vec2 of that. Okay, so now the only thing that's not being blended as I transition from one area to another with the atmosphere here is the start color, end color, start opacity, and end opacity, which might need um, a custom action. Whoa! The Ghostbusters game? I gotta check this out. I don't really know what this is. Do, 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 do. Oh, it's 3D. Is it good? Have you played it? Not really much of a 3D game fan myself. Wow, this is only two dollars and fifty cents. So tempting. I would I would get I would get it if I knew I was gonna play it. I know since I've spent most of my time making Songbringer, I don't really have time to play the games that I'm kind of iffy on. So I just yeah, I can only play the ones that I'm really really excited about. Uh huh. Oh, Dan Aykroyd was on it. Sweet, that's cool. I'm glad he was involved. He's a comedy legend. See if that worked. Transition that scale, position, opacity. Ooh. Yeah! Ha <laughs> ha! Wow, I don't even need to write any more code. That was perfect. It like nicely blends its way in. It stays in. 
looks nice there. Go back here, nicely blends back out. Boom! All right! This is great. Arr, arr. Whoa, original cast. Oh, yeah. Oh, you just on vacation? Oh, nice. Rick. Oh, Rick. Okay, so that should be good. Let's check this in. Nice, smooth blends. Yeah, you're a big fan of the Ghostbuster films? Nice. They're pretty epic, right? You gotta admit, Ghostbusters are some of the best films. I mean, they're so memorable, right? Kids these days. Dude, are they coming out with a new Ghostbusters film? Did I see a rumor about that or hear a rumor about that somewhere? Smoother visual transition from a hot room to a normal room. Oh, yeah. There's a new gun. Yeah, right? Oh, it's already out? Yeah, right? You can't really get better than the, the original cast they had. Oh, the new cast is all female. Whoa. Oh yeah, that could easily happen pretty quick, right? I had no, I had no idea there was a new Ghostbusters. Oh, so it came out this year. Oh, it's got a uh, Kristen. I don't know how to say her name. Okay. Yeah, yeah, right. Yes, yeah. I agree. Okay, next thing I want to do is fight the um fight the fire boss. And make sure cuz I changed his hit points. Um cuz that's the one of the biggest he was he's so freaking challenging. This guy's the ultimate challenge right now. So he needs to be a little easier. Maybe if he was like a level 9 boss, he could be this hard, but <laughs> this is like he was like level 9 boss hard. People hated the trailer. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna need a um, controller for this. Cause this guy is wicked hard. He's got, you gotta use your blink well, you gotta use pretty much all your items. You gotta use your bombs. So yeah, I took this guy's hit points. His hit points were at they were at like 26 to 80, and if you put it about a third of the way through that, that means that he had about 40 hit points or so, I think. Is that right? See, that's 80. Yeah, so it would be 60 times a third. So yeah, that was he had about 40 hit points when I fought him last time. And now he's going to have, so 62 minus that, 20 is about 41 so now he's gonna have more like 33 hit points instead of like 40 hit points so 
Let's see if this is easy enough. Right, yeah. I'll probably wait for that, too. Did you guys see Deadpool? Deadpool. I really like Deadpool. Um, I really like Mr. Robot as a TV show I've been, I watched recently. Whoops. Okay, wasting the bomb. with bombs is like, I don't even know why. I almost always miss the bomb. He's like so good at moving across the screen. Jeez. Changes his mind where he's gonna go. These little spiders get you too. Trapped. Stay down there. Yes, I got him with the bomb finally. Yeah, all right. Okay, that was definitely not as hard. Only had to use two cactuses. Kind of gotten tired of the comic book movie. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, you watched it two times. Nice. I watched it two times as well. You ready to go see the movies you want to see? Go. Oh. You're like, I wanted to see this movie, but didn't even go see it. Okay, that worked. That worked. I'm not going to belabor this point. I'm just going to say that this guy is easier now, and he's ready to go. Superior, it definitely has less minimum hit points. Archive that. Yo, that's four bucks fixed on today's stream already. I saw a video earlier of a guy eating a cactus. Spines and all? Really? Oh, wow. That's crazy. That's, that's, that's respectable. Yeah. Yeah. It is, you know, it's, it's only 10 episodes for Mr. Robot, but each one's, you know, 45 minutes or so. So, I think it's 10 episodes. There might be a little more. 12 episodes. Wow. Okay. So this is um this is working really well. I'm gonna do I'm gonna do this one next. If you have a weapon assigned to Y, right, which is the default for the cactus, and you get a cactus, then it messes everything up. So I want to see that happen. So I can go. I can turn that off. This save game. Go back to my other save game. It's kind of my debug save game here. Uh-huh. Yeah. I'm the same way. I get the I get these different flows where like for a few months I'm into something and a few months I'm not. Like some months I'm just like, I just want to watch YouTube videos. I just want to watch number file and computer file and 60 symbols and stuff. And then sometimes I'm like, ah, I'm gonna watch Bob Ross. And then sometimes it's comic book movies, comic book stuff. Yep, phases, totally phases for sure. Yeah. All right, so we need to be at zero, one, negative 12. Not have the cactus, wait. Yeah, yeah. Take away the cactus. YouTube and Twitch? Yeah. Yeah. I do watch Twitch sometimes too. Yeah, that's right. I've, I especially love watching artists on Twitch. It's so great. I'll, I'll spend a whole stream just watching an artist. Like, nice. It's soothing. Watching people do art is very soothing for me. 
Cactus, okay, take off that. Cactus container. A, D, D, D. Okay, oh, what I need is a default, something bound to Y that's like a weapon. Like, let's, let's bound the blink to it. Bind the blink. Um, and then also bind the blink. Okay, wait. I'm going to turn that off and bind it manually. Ugh. Okay, great. We've got the cactus ready to go. Um, if I bind this to what usually is Y, and it's bound, I'm going to save my game. Y blink and that what that did is it just went in here and bound blink to Y like that so that's kind of my new default flash show oh the flash show yeah I found it to be really cheesy as well PMC I definitely feel the exact same way I could I only watched like 15 minutes of that show and I was like this is this is not my kind of show it's not my cup of tea same thing, I didn't really like the Arrow that much either, <laughs> but but I did watch the whole first season of the Arrow. It wasn't as cheesy as The Flash, but... But uh, I really like Agent Carter. Agent Carter was sick, did you see that one? Or um, Dark Matter? Dark Matter was pretty rad. Okay, so if I pick this up... Ah, it does overwrite my setting. Okay. Oh, okay, that's an easy bug to fix. All I, get, all I gotta do now is make it so when it auto-equips an item, it respects what items you've already equipped and what you've already, like, found in your settings and stuff, so... So, auto-equip... item... Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and set a breakpoint here and see what exactly is happening. Step through the code. It's kind of fast. Sometimes it's faster just to step through code than it is to go and read all the code and imagine what it's doing. And it's certainly more effective, right? You're like actually testing the code rather than imagining what you think your, your code is going to be doing. Maybe I just convinced myself to step it through a debugger more often. I'm always interested in ways I can save time making video games. You know, how can I, if how can I write this game in half the time, but still have it be just as good? That would be a, that would be ridiculously awesome. I don't think that'll ever happen, but <laughs> it'd be nice, right? It's a good thing to kind of work towards. I think one of the big things that's really slows me down with today's, today's um, languages and IDEs. Is that? Is this the languages? There's a lot of friction in the C and C++ languages, and there's a lot of friction in this editor here with Xcode. There's a lot of things that it just could be better. Same thing with any IDE I've ever used, really. I wish there was just an IDE designed from scratch, like today in 2016. You got tired of the arrow, All right? Oh, wow, we have the same exact track record with the arrow and the flash. Oh, Agent Carter got canceled. Oh. Damn. Okay, what's happening here? Can we equip? Yes. Is it unequipped? Yeah. So we're looking for a new slot. This is where it gets the default button. Oh, it's like default button, button Y. Oh, and it would have Hold on. So, right? Visual Studio Code? But is Visual Studio Code a good... Uh, it's not even an IDE, is it? I just want something... Xcode is so... really slows me down all the time because of its tabbing. Its tabbing is horrible. Um, and it's autocomplete. If it's autocomplete was better, it would be so much better. But really, 
the biggest thing that slows me down is that you have to compile all the time. You know, and even though the game, this game compiles relatively fast, um, I'm really interested in freaking Jonathan Blow's language, Jai, just for the fact that it's going to compile a shitload faster than C++ and have the friction taken out. So really, I guess the thing that's really slowing me down the most as a developer is the language I'm using. I mean, it's awesome that it's, it's a cross-platform language. It's a fast language. C++ is great in those regards, but... The fact that it has headers slows it down. Oh, so it is an ID. You can, oh, so you can actually debug with it, compile with it and all that. Uh, okay. Did not know. Yeah. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to Jai. Can't wait for Jai to come out. Hurry up, Jonathan Blow. Come on, man. Give us a great language. I appreciate what you're doing, Jonathan Blow. Really. Seriously. He took the initiative to create that language. That's freaking awesome. Respect. Major respect. So wait, if I had... Hold on. If I had a cactus... Wait, wait, wait. No, I just want to see this step first. I didn't want to step into this de get default button method. Uh-huh. Right, yeah. The thing I like about Xcode, the thing that I really like about Xcode is just that, you know, it's not really compared to Visual Studio, but just that it, just that if it has any errors, it shows me what, you know, all the errors are right here, right in line. It's really good at showing you errors, and and once it's once it gets warmed up with its whole um, autocomplete, the autocomplete's pretty good in Xcode. But there's definitely some drawbacks there too. Like if I start typing it, the quick—I mean, the quick open has some drawbacks. Quick open shows you stuff that you do not even need. Like if I start typing interface, for example, which is one of my classes in my game, it's going to show me everything in like UI Kit and Foundation and Mod, all this stuff I've never ever clicked on and never ever will click on. It's like, oh yeah. You want to quickly open something deep in the SDKs for this entire OS? Sure. Yeah. No, I want to open the thing, the file in my own project first and foremost. Thank you, Quick Open Xcode. Somebody there on that team, hear me out. Jeez, at least give my files priority over the SDK files. Man, that's a big gripe of mine with Xcode. Yeah, yeah, you don't use those either. I use Visual Studio pretty, you know, not not all the time, but regularly. I use it regularly for sure. Mm, okay, pick this up. Step into this. Get default button method. I think it's going to... Yeah. Oh, it did have a default button already. So what did I have it set to? The cactus? Oh, cactus is Y. Okay, but regardless, if I take that out, still the default is going to be Y. Yeah, I bet you it does. Yeah, Visual Studio does have a pretty kick-ass autocomplete. And what's great about Visual Studio is they show you the comments that you wrote near that bit of code, too, when you're doing the autocomplete, which is sweet. So sweet. It's like, yes, I do want to see the comments right around where I just, I've, the thing I'm trying to type right now. Uh huh, it's a bit sluggish in analyzing. Ah. Uh, yeah. So you use the analyze a lot? I don't really, I don't, I've never really used the analyze. I don't think I want to try it right now because it recompiles, right? Okay, so what needs to happen here is if it's going to find a default button, but really what it needs to do is, is after it's found this default button, it needs to go, okay, is that button already bound to something already though?
Yeah, so if the default button is not invalid and the player does not have something already equipped to default button. Up, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, okay, so that should be proper if, as long as it's not invalid. So if equip, wait, 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 equip, there's only six buttons. Oh, the, not the analyze feature. Oh, right, right, that kind of thing. Yeah. Oh, that part's slow for you? That would suck. Oh, man. Yeah, I hope you get that fixed. That would totally suck. I definitely rely on that myself a lot, too. Which is right. It was what's one of the nice things about Xcode that I was just saying there. Like, for example, you know, if I type something in that's stupid, like um, in digit equals zero. This is what we're talking about. See this little fast pop-up thing? It's like, you know what? That's an error right there. And it lets me know right away. That's so helpful. This is probably one of the best parts about Xcode. But yeah, if that were slow, that would really, really be... That would blow. That slow would totally blow. Uh-huh. Invalidate style rules, text dead code. Cool. I got some warnings in place that, that warn me whenever there's dead code and all that. Uh huh. Code metrics. Oh, oh! I didn't even know they had code metrics in it in Visual Studio like that. Oh man, Saladongs. Jeez. But it doesn't happen all the time. That's weird. Hey, what did it did it start happening for you right after you did um something in your own code? Did you make a did you make a really big change or not a big change, but maybe just some kind of little fundamental change? Because I noticed one time for Xcode, for me at least, um, I was using a Unity build. Like I had, um, I had include, uh, you know, something .cpp inside my cpp file. And when I was inside this file, the f, you know, whatever this file was, it wouldn't do autocomplete. It was so freaking slow for autocomplete. So maybe it's that. So I, I I finally just ditched this whole plan and stopped doing Unity builds because Xcode sucked with it. So it might be it might be something like this. It might be like something to do with your own code. Oh, it happened gradually. Yeah, you never know. Gosh, I hope you fix it though, man, and soon. Index. Okay, I'm going to make this called default index. Haven't tried clearing out the cache. Oh yeah, that could definitely be it. How many years have I been using C++? Um, over 20. I started coding in the C language in 1994 and I learned C++ like the next year, 1995. So what is it, 2000? Yeah, I've been coding in C++ for 21 years. And I do, I do appreciate and love all the new features, like the C++ 11, C++ 14, really great things they've added. But still, the fact that I have to use a header file and I have the fact that it always is slow co to compile, it just sucks. Yeah, Ragathian, that's, pr that's, that's what it was for me. Yeah, the Unity build thing. I know, right? I had to switch my whole my whole build just because Xcode wasn't was slow all of a sudden because I started using Unity builds. Yeah.
So if the default button was invalid, this would become a minus one minus button a. Mm. Been considering a messing around with the new open source editor. Oh, four coder, cool. Oh, you need to port it. Oh, I know, right, Ragathian? I know, I know. That is kind of a, such a beautiful thing about C sharp. But I really, there's no way I could switch Songbringer at this point. I mean, Songbringer is like, how many lines? 65,000 lines right now. There's no way I'm going and rewriting all that. And, and secondly, there's a big problem with the portability of C sharp. I can't really, you know, it's not that easy to port to PS Vita, you know, trying to compile it on um, Xbox, bad thing. You know, it's like, no, wait, no, not, not Xbox. Um, Maybe it is just PlayStation Vita that has the problem. I know Mono Game works for PlayStation 4, but it has some problems still with PS Vita. And I'm just I, then that's just me paying attention to um, Axiom Verge and Thomas Hap. Thomas Hap was saying, you know, like there's is he still trying to release? Did he finally release? Hold on. Axiom Verge PS Vita. Did that ever get working? Maybe they did. You'd give up Xcode before you give up Unity builds? Wow, nice. Bold. You moved to Rust? Right on. Yeah, I've heard I've heard Rust is cool. And go. Oh yeah, okay, cool. So he find yeah, he finally got it working on PS on Vita. So I guess you can use C sharp now for a lot more than you could about a year ago. So it's good. It's good. C sharp's moving along. <clears throat> is Vim worth learning? Yeah, I definitely would think Vim is worth learning. Yeah, well, I and I heard there was, but maybe that was just something he was doing with his particular bit of C sharp or whatever. The advocates seem like zealots. They are. They are right. Vim Vim advocates are definitely zealots. They got me using Vim. The, the Vim zealots came into my stream and they're like, "You need to blah blah blah." But I've actually been using Vim for quite a while, um, and I'm just kind of used to it now. But the the biggest thing is just getting used to modes, right? You gotta you gotta see how it changes from you know. Yeah, I don't I don't need to waste time or whatever talking about it. But yeah. If you do, if you do want to actually, the one thing you should do is just like play the Vim. Um, do this. Go to the Vim. What's it called? Vim Adventures. Yeah, go to Vim Adventures. This thing is a pretty good introduction to Vim for, for at least for me. I'm like, okay, cool. Put it, make it a game. So you can actually use, you can actually use the Vim keys in a little game here, and it kind of gives you an introduction to what it's like in Vim. I think this is pretty good. Vim Adventures. But there's also Vim, um, Vim, what's it, Vim Tutor, Vim Tutorial, Vim Tutor, yeah, there's Vim Tutor, that's, this is pretty nice to play with this too. Oh, it's using, um, it's not using my Vim, oh my god. <laughs> I'm stuck. I'm stuck in Vim Tutor because I I customize my own Vim. This is embarrassing. Oh, there. Wait, did I make it out? I didn't make it out. Jesus, that was hard. Oh, don't ever run Vim Tutor. <laughs> I'm joking. Yeah, you did the Vim Tutor. Oh, all right. Yeah, you. Hopefully, you had a, less of any problems than I just did right there. So I think. Default button is invalid. We'll set the default index to negative one. Otherwise, 
ka default button ka and then we can just say if constants is valid equip index default index and equip default index equals k item none then the index is equal to the default index so there it should equip something if you don't have a, if the slot is empty you yeah, having to hard exit vim right <laughs> yeah hey what's up zyger oh you play oh right road likes yeah well if you if you already know that hk hjkl part or is it, yeah, yeah. If you already know that, you know it. You can pretty much get around in Vim, and if, especially if you can exit. If you can exit Vim and move around in Vim, it's pretty good. But I will say, having having grown up using so many like nano type editors and you know everyday editors not like Vim that aren't moded, it is still kind of a brain. It messes with my brain to use Vim still. Like if I'm if I'm sleepy or if I'm like having a slow day or whatever, Vim is harder for me to use. <laughs> yeah, spam cute like that. Yeah, yeah, it's it's tough. It is if it, the modal editing. If you're not used to it, if you didn't grow up with it, it's tough. It's tough as hell. It's it's taken me a good year now just to finally kind of feel sort of confident with Vim, and I I still am not even scratching anywhere near. I'm not even getting any. It's, the benefits of Vim are still have a lot. There's a long ways to go to learn to getting all the actual benefits of Vim. So I'm just I'm barely even a Vim user at this point. Okay, let's try this out. Basically, it's going to say, okay, I want to apply this cactus to the Y button because that's the only default it knows. But because I already have bound something to the Y button, it should, bi it should bind it to either F or V for me. Okay, so the default button came up to be Y. The default index is going to become, Y would be 3. Nice, it's 3, cool. And um, if that's a valid equip index and that is bound to nothing, which is not, okay, great. So now it's going to go fall back to this other method where it looks for um, a valid something to equip to. Cool. Yeah, and it bound it to F because I already had, I had that open. All right, cool. So now let's see that from the other angle. If I didn't have anything equipped to Y. All right, PMC, see you, man. Cheers, thanks for stopping by. Enjoy. So if I just pick this up, now it's just me up down to Y, cool. Or let's say if I had some other preference for cactus. So let's say I have a prefer for my cactus to be bound to R. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. So really in the end, Mr. Hef, you're the one that has to determine whether it's worth it for you. You know? It's it might not be worth it. You know, just let the let the Vim zealots keep saying what they're saying, but in the end you get to choose. So wait, did it put it to R that time? Yeah. So let's say I have a really complex situation like um, I have the sword. I have something already bound to Y. I have one open slot. I have a default for the cactus is A or something. So it's gonna want to. It should want to bind the cactus to A, but it should be equipped already. So I guess this is not really that complex of a situation. 
Oh no, it overwrote. Either that, I don't have a sword. Oh no, it's just because I didn't have the sword. Okay. Okay, cool. Put it up to R because R is all we had. Um, let's take off the lighter and then put the lighter there, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is a total time investment to learn those modal habits. Convinced to learn Vim. It's not like I actually had a good workflow already. Oh. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah. I think you're well on your way if you already understand how to quit it and you, and you already understand how to move around in it. Mm. Is, that, is there any other kind of more complex situation I could... Oh, I guess if I had everything bound. Uh, I can't find the top at. Meditate. Alright, I got everything bound to something right now. I'm gonna pick up the cactus. It should overwrite my last. Yeah. Good. This is working well. I like how this turned out. Alright, so we got sword, bomb, top at. I'm gonna turn my settings back to how I prefer. Blink. No wait, lighter. And my default, I take off this default, take off that default. Give me back my cactus. Uh, 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 uh. I actually need to pump out software. Oh, wow, cool. Yeah, definitely great time to learn. Great time to make changes and update your workflow. Yeah, I hear ya. I kind of made some of those changes with this game. It's like, I'm gonna change up things a little bit, just a little bit, not too much. Sweet. Change log. Um, default button mappings do not overwrite. Custom button mappings. That's really all it is. Okay. Another one bites the dust. That's five bugs fixed on today's stream. Bam. How much time left do I got? Another 20 minutes or so. Might be able to get a few more. Okay, so I'm gonna do more particles around the light sources and beams. Let's find a light source and beam. Well, level one's a good place to go for that. The entrance to level one has some light sources. Should have some light sources. All right, Elite SCB, good thanks for stopping by. See ya, man. Rest well. Man, there's already a lot of light coming from those beams. I mean, I guess I could make... Let's, I'm going to just try and increase the amount ridiculously until I scale it back a bit. Oh. Uh, 
Great light beam. Here's where it creates these particles. And one of these settings here is density. I always forget which. Speed, density, fade duration. So speed, density. Let's take this density up a lot. Yeah, I use Git. Yeah. I'm always checking things into Git. I check into Git a lot. I commit a lot. Commit and push. It's 20 times a day sometimes. Yeah, that's ridiculous. There's way too many particles. Let's see. What's it look like around one? Uh, both. Yeah, I use both online and local. <clears throat> but yeah, I basically I have my own re remote repo, so I'm, I I rely on my remote repo repo a lot. Uh, no, no, I I pay. Well, technically, yes, I pay for my own server. I have a Linode, um, and so my Linode does a lot of things. It's like runs my websites, runs any kind of game servers I would I would need for my games I'm writing, things like that. But yeah, it it also does. Um, I have a pri basically I have my own private repo on my on my server. So my Linode. How did that look with 1.0? But the good thing about Linode is they're only like 20 bucks a month, you know, and then you got your own server. Yeah, even that's too much, man. I liked it how it was. Maybe 0 0.707. Yeah, that works. Okay, next I'll do, I'll try and increase the amount of particles here for these the flames. But also, I want to do some lights for these other kind of lights. Yeah, nice. Oh, I didn't know they had free repos. There's also Bitbucket. Bitbucket's free. Bitbucket, right? It's like it's like GitHub basically, but it's they have free private repos. So you, I think you can have like one private repo or something like that with Bit with Bitbucket. Mhm. Mm nice. Oh, they use oh they use TFS. What's TFS? Ah, oh, Team Foundation server. Oh, it's its own server, huh? Okay. Oh, it's also got this kind of stuff too, like your communication amongst your team stuff. Nice. Where does it put those flames is Oh, it creates it in entities. These particles right here. Let's do some more density. Density two. It's like the Ferrari of project management. Sweet. 
Oh, that doesn't look too bad. That's a lot more, though. Maybe half that. Maybe they should turn more orange. Nah, they're all right. Maybe density 1.5. That's pretty good. Okay, so we got more particles there. I want to do some more particles for these other light sources, too. Oh, maybe the door lights should have their own particles, too. But this one I'm going to do next. So these guys, um... These things. Make them have some particles. Question is, is it already, it's already an entity? Forget if the lamp. Oh, yeah, the lamp's already here. Nice. You can do some particles with this lamp really easily. Mm hmm. Nice. These are going to be the wrong color. Let's see what this color is. Just sort of a purplish color. That could do. Let's try that color first. Maybe it should get dark though by the time it's done. Let's check it out. Okay. It's like, um, the opacity definitely needs to change. So the opacity starts at zero, goes up to one. See what that looks like. What's up, Space? My name? Zagger, thanks, man. I love how data driven Songbringer is too. I really kinda wish I wish I I really wish I would would have started from the beginning making everything super duper data driven. Cause it's so it's it's helped so much making things data driven. It's fast. It's so fast to change stuff. off so I guess it would need to have a child children circle children particles render image empty Data driven, just like this, right? I'm, what I'm doing right here is all I'm doing is a making changes to data, and it, and I don't have to do anything in my code. Just things things that don't require code to change stuff. Like right here, I'm just changing the position of those particles. So I'm going to add a little bit to the y, maybe ten. So now it'll push them up a little bit. And once again, I haven't made any change to code. Nothing to recompile. Yeah, that's a little better. Let's go 20. Nice, cool. Now it's right up there at the, at the middle. Now it just needs to be a little less tall. So maybe like 26 maybe um, and they're a bit too white 
So I'm going to tone down this color they're using. Maybe there. So yeah, anybody that's just joined the stream, what I'm working on here is the particles for these lights here. There's a bit too much. There's a bit too much going on here. Too many. So the density is too much. Um, the opacity could start at maybe more like a half. It's Z order can go a little higher too. And I think it needs to be a little taller again. Let's try 32. So right now I'm just adding some particles to some light sources to make them a little more attractive. purple. Why are you not purple? Maybe you need to be more saturated and less bright. The randomness is kind of not right. Maybe the kind should be something else. Particles. There's some other kinds I can use. I don't want random, I don't want smoke, I guess waterfall. Interesting. I think they're too big. Particle scale one. Maybe a little less width. And maybe it maybe a, maybe a complementary color instead of the same purple color. Just white. One more F. That's pretty cool. That's kind of a neat, a unique particle. I think maybe though, it should start a little lower. So 16, 
and start a little less opaque. I think his density needs to come down a little more though. And yeah, I really want to see a complementary color. So this is 291. If I take 180 away from that, it should be complementary. That would be 111. Ugh, that is ugly. No, let's go. Let's go more like that. Put a bit of that's a cool. That's a cool color. Put a bit. Put a zero. That's kind of interesting. They go from white to slightly yellow. Still, the density, I want the density low. Because I don't even know what these particles are. What the heck is this? This little thing that's making these things, do these line particle things. How many times can I say things in one sentence? I don't know. Pretty good. Okay, that's I can live with this. Okay, not gonna mess with it anymore. But I am going to do something about the doors having a little more light or a little more particles around them. Something like these dust motes. When it creates a door. At the end of this create door code, it creates some the lights around the door, and uh, oh, for all these lights around the doors, we create a little particles. Uh, no, Bafu's not on today. He's we decided he's he's watching Netflix today. He's chilling. Smoke, size, width, vector. Opacity factor. Uh, maybe 250. Color. The 
One, two, three, four, five, six. Did I get the size? This is size. What size is this? <laughs> what a lazy bot. <laughs> You think you're at 4K? You probably are, man. You're about ready to do your your raffle. My size. Oh, that size. Okay. Fan, fan. Okay, let's hope we have some dust motes. Okay. Looks like we are we do have some dust motes here next to these lights. They definitely need some adjustment. They're, they're like using the same style as above. I think I'd like to see them come out horizontally too. These need to be worked on too. Okay, I'll, I'll start with the um, horizontal ones here. I'll make these look cool. Oh, wait. I think this thing, I could just use lock color right there. You have a physical key for it? Ah. What's a Corsair K95? Oh yeah, check this out. You do got you got a whole row of macro buttons over here. Rows and columns, I mean. Dang. This is like macro heaven right here. What's this one? This is a limited edition RGB version. That's kind of cool. G15? What's a G15? Oh uh, yeah. Wow, this one's even got like its own little display and stuff. What? Just wanna look at a picture. Thank you. That's pretty neat. Okay, if I go down to this door, this one should not be colored. Yeah, so these particles here coming out of that door are colored. Okay, good. That's good to use that color there. Now I can start with the vector. So if we're north, the north light, the vector would be straight south. So vec dot set zero negative one. 
Um, if it's south, though, we want to go straight north. East and west. East, like, I'm thinking it's going to come down at an angle, so we want to go east would be 1. No, the door to the east would be negative 1. Negative 1 and negative 1. The door to the west would be 1, negative 1. Oh, yeah, copy. Oh, copy paste. Oh, it's just a copy paste. Jeez, yeah. Oh, and especially with if you're using Vim, I can definitely see how that'd be awesome. But in general, I'm sure that's really great. Oh, I'm not using the vector yet. Come on, use the vector, man. Vec. Yeah, clicky. Clicky keyboards. Oh, you got the RGB? Nice. Okay, now the, the particles are moving in the right direction, but they are not starting at the right place. And they're a bit too bright at first. The opacity at first, 0, 250, 0. Oh, it's just in the middle. 128 and hmm Looks like we don't need to adjust the Y position. It's starting to look good, but still a bit too much opacity for me. For my liking. It is nice. Very cool. So that's really nice seeing some particles, just a, just a few little particles coming out of that that light. And some more particles coming out of this light over here. Let's see what this light looks like down here. Looks weird. The light's not on. But, um... I want to do the color is apply tone on the lock color times 1.5 maybe 2.0 even let's try 2.0 first so it'll brighten up the color a bit I don't know why it's if it's not locked oh we want to do the dust modes if it's not locked only And make sure the player has a key so I can get through that door if I want. Cool, got a key. Mm-hmm. The O-rings dampen the sound. Oh. Too clicky when I want to type silently. Ah. Basically, <laughs> when I want to type silently, that's funny. Basically, their features, none of them have a threshold to go past like normal. Ah. No, 
no such thing as deep looking. <laughs> If I go to this side... See, it looks like uh, it didn't show me those particles because it was locked. Oh, these look pretty good. Okay. Oh, the Y... The, this... This position's off a little. Ah, there we go. Yeah, so those colors look a lot better. Yeah, because they're brighter. Okay, cool. So now I just want to make sure these particles are being shown. I think it's some problem with their Z order. Render set. Oh, that's not really the Z order of thing I want. Set global Z order. Okay, I'm going to see if I'm setting the global Z order before I create these particles. Fixes that. And then I'm pretty much going to be done with my stream. Get some dinner. Cook some leftovers. Woo! Leftovers! I love leftovers. Yes, it worked. These particles that are coming out of this light now are not obscured by the wall anymore. Very good. This one could be a little higher if possible. Wait, does it have a width or whatever? If I made the height a little taller, like uh, if vec dot y is 1.0, then we'll go 1.0 for its height offset. Yeah, that looks pretty good. All right. 
right, not too shabby. Got some good looking particles around these north facing doors. Same thing with the west east doors. Color doors are looking good too. One more thing crossed off today's bug list. More particles around light sources. That's six bugs. Six Trello cards accomplished in one stream. I feel pretty accomplished because usually this one time I did to try to do as many as I could in one stream and I only got like one done or something. It's crazy. More particles around light sources. Done. Let's check that in. Yeah, thanks, Space My Name. Oh man, Steam. Steam's killing it. The one benefit to Steam is that you can play, you got your Steam achievements and leaderboards and all that. But I hear ya. You might as well just buy it with GOG. Because, right, doesn't GOG give you the, the Steam key? as well or that's humble maybe that's just humble dust motes there some more particles around those and those and those game looks a tiny bit better now okay so that's it for today's stream thanks a lot for watching everybody I'm going to keep on tonight. I'm just going to come back and keep on working on my bug list and stuff. So I'm on my, I'll be working through more Trello items and stuff, improving the latest fire dungeon, really. That's kind of what I need to work on next. Making the fire dungeon. I'm thinking about moving the Shadrax to your, the gate item, the, the fire armor, basically, to put it inside the fire dungeon so you always get to see the heat damage effect. Because right now, the way the game plays out is if you go to dungeon two, you play the, the dungeons in order. You get the fire armor before you go to the fire dungeon, so you never know that the heat damages you. So it'd be nice to at least be damaged by the heat a little bit before. So I'll be working on that tonight. Yeah, so take it easy, guys.